where ordinary people have carved their names in an extraordinary history by showing the world that peace is always better than war. Our reach is not limited by our borders, bringing joy in people's hearts and a spark of rhythm to their moves. This is the welcome home of opportunity, inspiring millions to look here in search of a better life. That we expect to emerge and engage with over the next two days. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, a very warm welcome to the Nelson Mandela Foundation and to our visitors from the U.S. and other countries in the region, Namkele Gile, Mzanz Africa. So I'm delighted that Brenda Say has taken this opportunity to do that, and I hope it will not wait until the next time that South Africa hosts Akoa, but perhaps now, on an annual basis, if we have an opportunity to say, here's what we've achieved. Here's how much growth we have seen in terms of access to the Agoa markets. Here's how much investment we've been able to attract into the continent because precisely of this um, Agoa opportunity. So it has created a two-way flow of opportunity, but most certainly the benefit, the, the incredible benefit, is to this continent. There are many goals to go, but one of them is to help reduce poverty on the continent. And agricultural development has been shown to be, you know, one of the strongest levers we have to eradicate extreme poverty and also to address food insecurity. And that has to do with taking an entire value chain approach to agriculture. And so I would just say briefly, I think we have seen some opportunities where Goa has been used well for agriculture, but there are so many more. And this is not only about food security, it's about you know, the women small farmers who, who grow incredible produce here on the continent. And what we'd love to see more of is to see those, those products experience value add here on the continent, um, whether that's processing, drying, before they come to the U.S. market. Another industry that I would give an example that has benefited extremely from Agoa has been textiles and apparel. And you know, South Africa has been great at using um, the diverse array of products for Agoa. So about 6,900 products are eligible between Agoa and what we call GSP for duty-free access to, to the United States. And South Africa you know, exports on multiple of those, which I think is great and something we want to see expand more and to go deeper and for other countries on the continent um, to echo that example. The fact that the um, ACOA Act was just so inspired in that it is an African, it talks to the African continent, yes, certain countries in the continent, um, that already presents us the opportunity to approach the op this uh, um, opportunity from a value chain perspective so that we not as individual countries that are still trying to develop, trying to compete with each other to access the markets, but we can rather leverage each other's strengths and ensure that we are taking fuller advantage of this opportunity. I hope that from this weekend onwards, by this time next year, we'll be talking about having doubled our exports through the ACOA um, opportunity. We'll take your challenge. I'd love to see South Africa double its exports by next year. So, you know, from your mouth to all the ears um, in, in the South African economy, that's one. Uh, <laughs> I really want to hear the ideas that our private sector and civil society partners have for what we can be doing to help partners access it from our side, right? The United States has invested billions of dollars in economic development on the continent, and we want that to go towards inclusive, sustainable growth. And so what are your ideas for what we need to do um, with those investments to make them more impactful? And three, I would love for Congress and the, um, the staff members who are here to hear your ideas for what reauthorization beyond 2025 looks like. Mm -hmm. The Biden administration fully supports reauthorization beyond 2025, but obviously 
the pen lies with our U.S. Congress since it is a law, and we are here to support them. But I'm hoping, you know, the good ideas from African and American businesses, from civil society, from labor, can be shared as they consider this legislation over the next year or two, as to not only how they will renew it, but how they can renew it in a way that makes it more impactful. So those are my three goals for Sunday, um, and I'm looking forward to seeing them come true. We want to see more small businesses making use of it. We want to see more women-owned businesses making use of it. It is an untapped um, opportunity, and I think there's no doubt about that. So I think part of it, that's the point of this week, is to say what else needs to be done. And then I think there's two other things. One is we need to think about from the American side, how do we make it more accessible? Does that mean making the paperwork translated into local languages more quickly? Does that mean increasing the number of our small business development centers around the continent that show small entrepreneurs how to use it? I also think there's a question of how do African governments enable their companies and their populations to make the most of it? We've seen that the countries that have um, realize the best impact from AGOA are those that have a utilization strategy, those that are thinking about the right enabling environment. And so I would say it's something that we need to solve together as the American government, as African governments, as African private sector, as civil society. You know, as the opening video said, we believe in South Africa and we need to do this together for the benefit of the people here but across the continent. AGOA is a cornerstone of the U.S. economic partnership with the countries of Sub-Saharan Africa. And that partnership is, has been important to us for decades. AGOA is going on 23 years now. This is not a new program, but it is incredibly important for the United States to re-emphasize this economic partnership and to strengthen it. And AGOA is just one of the many tools that we have invested in the African people in order to help deliver sustainable, inclusive growth. The beautiful animal kingdom and the ever-changing seasons that cover our world. We are the birthplace of humanity and the showcase of human excellence. We believe in South Africa. We are inspired by our victories of the past and our strong institutions to overcome the challenges of today and build a better tomorrow. This is who we are.